The theme of this John Deere Mavis Insight video program is a comparison of the John Deere 8020 series tractor and the latest updates to the Case IH MX Magnum series tractors. Case IH MX Magnum series tractors are manufactured by CNH Global, an affiliate of the Italian company Fiat. It is important to note that this video supplements current and future information on the Case IH MX product. It is not designed to be an in-depth review of the product, but instead features new updates and targets known selling tactics of CNH regarding the MX product. After viewing this video, you'll see numerous examples of why recent customer satisfaction surveys rate the 8020 series the unprecedented leader in terms of reliability and uptime, ease of operation, and in providing owners the best profit potential and return on investment. The MX series has changed with the introduction of the 215 PTO horsepower MX255, replacing the MX240, and the 240 PTO horsepower MX285, replacing the MX270. The MX line also includes the 190 PTO horsepower MX230 and the 170 PTO horsepower MX210 for a total of four models spanning the power range from 170 to 240 horsepower. Rated engine speed is 2000 RPM. Only the MX255 and MX285 have electronically controlled engines. The John Deere 8020 line is made up of five horsepower sizes, all at rated engine speed of 2200 RPM. The 8120, 8220, 8320 and 8420 with 170, 190, 215 and 235 PTO horsepower respectively and the 8520 at 255 PTO horsepower a full 15 horsepower more than the largest Case IH MX competitor. When comparing horsepower the MX285 should in fact be more closely compared to an 8420 Thus, in comparing price, the MX285 should be compared to an 8420 as well. The 8020 series line also includes four distinct power solutions, with one that's right for every customer. Standard two-wheel drive on the 8120 and 8220, MFWD front axle on the 8120 through 8420, ILS suspended front axle on all models, and a full lineup of track models. The newest upgrades to the standard MX product should first be acknowledged. These include brake lights, self-canceling turn signals, backlit electrical switches, ISO 11783 compatibility, end of row functions, speed matching, automatic shifting, increased hydraulic capacity, and hitch ride control. Several of these features will be addressed within this video. New optional features include suspended front axle, seat suspension, and constant engine speed control. Front axle and seat suspension systems will be the subject of in-depth analysis in this program. Constant engine speed control is available only as an extra cost option on electronically controlled MX-255 and MX-285 engines. John Deere field crews is standard equipment on all 8020 series tractors, all of which boast PowerTech electronically controlled engines. The MX suspended axle is supplied by Dana and claims all the same benefits without all the complexity. However, many of their axle design specifications don't even come close to John Deere independent link suspension. For example, MX offers customers only 4.4 inches of suspension travel with 6 degree oscillation. 
At 60 inch centers, this equates to approximately 6 and 3 eighths inches of movement at the wheel flange. The low degree of oscillation results in the axle bottoming against the frame in less than challenging terrain conditions. When placed under stress in a bottoming scenario, contact between the fan and fan shroud was observed on two different production tractors used in the development of this video. However, this condition may have been due to a factory assembly problem. The John Deere designed and manufactured ILS offers 10 inches of independent vertical travel at the wheel flange. Unlike a beam axle, movement at one wheel of an independent suspension system is not transmitted to the other wheel or movement of the tractor chassis. In average field conditions, the beam axle does not allow independent movement of the front wheels. The axle system tips the duals relative to the surface. Loading is reduced from four points when the duals are on a flat surface to two points as soon as the axle begins to oscillate. With the MX front dual system, loss of ground contact and traction when oscillating over surface irregularities is evident and hampers traction in rough field conditions. John Deere recognizes the inefficiency of front duals on solid beam axles in most practical field conditions. Thus, John Deere only offers front duals on independent link suspension. John Deere ILS is true independent front suspension, allowing front wheels to follow terrain independently. As the front suspension reacts to changes in terrain, the front duals maintain four points of contact with the soil with uninterrupted power to the ground in rough conditions. If flotation is the issue, MX is at a disadvantage. Even though they recognize tracks as having advantages in their higher horsepower tractors, their only option in row crop tractors is to push customers into beam axle mounted front duals. No competitor offers the power solutions available from John Deere. In addition to front duels, Deere also offers the ultimate flotation advantage of tracks. The location of the MX suspended axle pivot 46 inches above the ground with 380-85R34 tires results in significant lateral movement of the front of the tractor when moving over undulations. The ILS system allows wheels to travel vertically with minimum lateral movement of the tractor chassis. In normal field operation, MX operators experienced added control difficulty, rougher ride, and increased fatigue. Meanwhile, John Deere operators enjoyed incomparable ride and control with corresponding reduction in operator fatigue. MX advertises the maximum front axle capacity of the heavy-duty 12-bolt hub front axle as 13,300 pounds. This axle is standard only on MX-255 MX-285 and with the suspended axle option. The heavy-duty axle is also an option on MX-210 and MX-230. The MX suspended axle system must be disabled in applications with high front axle loading. This fact, combined with the relatively lower 875 pound added weight of the system, leaves their claim of all the same benefits without all the complexity easy to dispute. A console mounted switch to the operator's right enables and disables the MX system and incorporates an indicator light which is nearly impossible to see. Potential dear customers who demo the MX should be encouraged to utilize this switch. From the operator's perspective, in comparable field conditions, it is often difficult to tell if the suspension is on or off, unlike the obvious suspension action of John Deere ILS. ILS adds 1,400 additional pounds of heft, giving the front axle an impressive 23,800 pound capacity, keeping pace with the most demanding front loading applications. Patented electronic controls enable ILS to function even with heavy front implements, such as loaders and front blades. This patented control technology works seamlessly with the operator for maximum productivity in the broadest range of applications negating the need for a confusing switch. The MX limited slip front differential is standard on all axle configurations with an option for an electro-hydraulic differential lock. 
limited slip differential is standard equipment on all John Deere MFWD axles, and electrohydraulic differential lock is standard with the ILS system. In a drawbar load comparison, a John Deere 8020 and MX with comparably sized and properly inflated tires were observed. The John Deere pulled a chisel with steady traction, while the MX exhibited severe power hop. In customer evaluations held with the MX, John Deere and competitive customers found the MX suspension action negligible and in fact did not dissipate power hop as claimed by CNH. The conclusion is made that the MX suspended axle system is significantly short of the performance of ILS. The MX front dual hub system has some basic drawbacks. The extension tubes are 20 inches in diameter compared to 11 inches with the John Deere hubs giving the Deere four and a half inches greater row crop clearance. Two different hubs are required to achieve common front dual spacings. According to the MX operator manual only 30 inch row crop settings are available. The John Deere system uses one hub to match inside wheel spacings from 60 to 88 inches with settings available in four inch increments. Dual front wheel row crop settings are available for popular 30 inch applications as well as 20 and 22 inch specialty crops. MX front duals are difficult to remove and install due to a hub extension design that places mounting stud hardware between the hub and extension. Both the inner wheel and spacer mount on the same studs, so both large heavy components must be aligned during installation. Thread damage on mounting studs is difficult to avoid when handling awkward and heavy wheels and spacers. Hardware located in a very narrow location also makes tightening difficult and time consuming and most likely overlooked in busy seasons. The John Deere front dual hub system is designed with hardware mounted outside, easy to access for removal and installation. Outside wheels are mounted with separate hardware allowing removal without disturbing the inside wheel hardware. In conclusion, John Deere ILS was designed specifically for demanding use in the 170 to 255 horsepower range, with duels in mind from the beginning. ILS is another complete solution from John Deere, offering choice unequaled by any competitor, further contributing to the 8020 series customer satisfaction success story. Another addition to CNH feature content is the positive response seat. Case IH claims their system offers the ultimate in control and comfort. The system uses seat position sensor changes relative to time to adjust the damping rate of the seat suspension. The system reacts passively only to reduce shock, but does little to control vertical inputs to the operator. In fact, the performance of the positive response seat combined with MX suspended front axle does not compare to John Deere active seat alone. In engineering bump track comparisons, tractors were tested with properly inflated tires traveling at normal field operating speeds. These side-by-side -side views show the superior ride of the John Deere active seat compared to the positive response seat. It's also important to recognize that this comparison was made between an MX equipped with suspended front axle and a John Deere with MFWD axle. Active seat technology uses an accelerometer to instantly and accurately detect seat movement. Integrated electronic controls react immediately to remove up to 90% of the vertical inputs to the operator. Add ILS to active seat and the customer is in for the best ride in the industry. Positive response claims simply don't stand up to proven active seat performance. In summary, adding $8,000 to the MX list price for suspended axle and positive response seat still does not equal the comfort John Deere offers with only the $1,800 active seat option. Which tractor delivers more value? John Deere. MX has made no effort to offer their customers the ease of programmable tractor or implement controls. John Deere provides as standard equipment on 8,020 tractors 
the Exclusive and Patented Implement Management System, or IMS. Two controls have been added which provide the MX customer with some appearance of programmable control. One rocker switch is added to the control console, which allows programmed selection of upshifts or downshifts of one, two, three, or four gears. Changing the number of shifts requires engine shutdown and thus cannot be performed on the go. Usability and flexibility are severely limited. Overall, the feature does little to make operation easier with any degree of repeatability. The hitch raise lower switch is installed next to the programmable shift switch. Hitch switch activation will initiate automatic operation of the MFD and differential lock. If the operator desires to coordinate programmed shifts with hitch movement, MFD and differential lock, both switches can be activated simultaneously with one motion. This sounds good, but also assumes that the operator wants all the functions to occur simultaneously. If the operator desires shifts to occur and front drive and differential lock disengaged before the hitch is raised, the MX operator must resort to individual control activation. The MFD and differential lock switches are also located side by side. Manual activation of both switches with a single movement may be preferable to automatic control in some applications. An example is differential lock engagement, which occurs when slippage exceeds 15%. When farming contours, slippage often increases when pulling around a turn. In this situation, activation of the differential lock hampers the turning effort and becomes undesirable. Despite these upgrades for the MX, hydraulic remote circuits and power takeoff still cannot be programmed in any way for repeatable end-of-row functions, and hydraulic remotes must still be canceled manually. MX controls still do not compare to the level of simplicity and programming that John Deere continues to offer customers with the IMS feature. In a typical row-end application, the MX customer must actuate multiple controls to execute a turn, even when using new automatic features. Lack of programming features means all these moves are repeated on every turn all day long. John Deere IMS offers simple programming of two separate sequences. Operators can program any detented activity on any SCV, transmission shifts, hitch, PTO, as well as differential lock and MFWD action. With IMS, saved actions are repeated by activating a single switch. Sequences are repeated time after time, the same, every time. The operator is free to maneuver efficiently through turns. IMS is distance-based, so execution of events happens at the same place on the headland, regardless of speed, allowing throttle adjustments without affecting playback. IMS learns the target gear of programmed shifts, not the number of shifts. Thus, shifts in the field do not affect critical headland maneuvering speed. Distance-based IMS control is patented by John Deere, forcing Case IH or any competitor to use a highly inconsistent time-based system. In every aspect, IMS is far superior to all competitors, saving the operator hundreds of control actions every day. Fatigue is reduced, promoting maximum day-long operator efficiency. Unmistakable examples of why customers rate the 8020 series tops in ease of operation with the greatest impact on your customer's bottom line. The right front cab post in the MX cab is used as the mounting location for tractor instruments and tractor status displays. The location of instruments does provide good visibility. The major issue is the high level of ambient light, which makes instruments difficult to read in daytime operation. A functions display informs the operator of MFD, differential lock, or PTO operation, as well as bright lights and engine or system warnings. The standard display provides digital readout of system status, such as engine hours, transmission temperature and pressure, manifold temperature and system voltage. To change the readout, the operator must press and hold the reset touchpad for two to three seconds. Being a long reach for the operator makes use of the display more difficult 
especially in field applications. The standard display is also used to change settings for features such as remote valve extend retract values, hitch lift percent for MFWD or differential lock control, and program shifts. These controls have value but are difficult and time consuming to operate, unlike simple control logic used by John Deere. The programming mode can only be entered after the key is turned to on. Then the program button must be depressed for two to three seconds within the first ten seconds after turning the key. If the tractor is running, this means engine shutdown to make program changes. A quick on-off flash cycle of the key is not sufficient to allow access to program mode. The timing demands are critical, resulting in frequent aborted programming attempts with the inevitable start over. An inconsistent navigational process makes it easy to enter incorrect modes or menus, and backing up to previous screens is difficult. The system is not intuitive and demands the use of the operator's manual for program changes. Once values are changed, navigating to an exit screen and turning the key off allows the system to learn the change. Finally, the operator can easily enter diagnostics. This is an uncomfortable situation, as an operator sees numbers coming and going on the display and has visions of compromising or altering the operating system, which is possible. The display often reads, Hitch Capture on Startup. Incomplete and poorly applied controller logic allows loss of synchronization between the hitch controller and hitch component position. The hitch position control must slowly be moved to allow the controller to relearn hitch position. After waiting through the default instrument check, then having to recapture hitch position, operators could quickly become frustrated. No control or display of remote hydraulic valve detents or flow is provided with the standard display. Without the optional performance monitor, a rotary dial under the padded armrest sets all remote detents to the same time value. In addition, no repeatable flow settings are available, only reference marks near the flow control knobs. Only with the additional expense of the performance monitor do MX operators have individual control over remote valve detent times, as well as digital readout of individual flow settings for each remote. These features are all standard equipment, always visible and accessible with John Deere touch set hydraulics. Unlike John Deere auto shutdown, the MX also has no engine protective shutdown feature unless equipped with the optional performance monitor. Performance Monitor also adds fuel usage, acres, service intervals, and other productive information, which are nice additions. As with the standard display, the navigational scheme for the Performance Monitor is not intuitive, and touchpads must be held for several seconds to activate. Combined with a long reach from the seat, the operator will likely stop and move forward in the seat to make adjustments. As a practical matter, the performance monitor is unlikely adjusted on the go, as Case IH claims. Adjusting percent of slip settings for hitch-mounted implement applications is not performed on the display as one would expect. Instead, the slip control switch is used to toggle to increase or decrease settings. Settings return to defaults on shutdown. John Deere Hitch Slip Command uses a simple 1 through 10 setting to adjust hitch response sensitivity based on a preset slip of 10%. The system can be turned off, then returns to the last setting when reactivating at a later time. MX has no match for John Deere touch set hydraulic controls with full control over SCV flow and detents without complicated programming modes. Just select the SCV to be adjusted, then turn a knob to change the digital displays for quick, easy, repeatable settings on the go and without missing a beat. The combination of the corner post display, vehicle monitor, touch set panel, all standard equipment on John Deere, far exceeds the base specification of the MX controls and instrumentation. Only with the addition of the optional performance monitor does the MX reach a control and instrumentation level comparable with John Deere. When it comes to ease of operation, 
and optimized performance, customer focus groups, including owners of competitive tractors, conclude that no competitor meets or beats John Deere 8020 series tractors. The MX Armrest Control Module is an attempt to copy command arm with several key differences. Illuminated activated rocker switches are hard to see during the daytime and the larger layout of the control module relates to greater hand and arm movement. Operating by feel is difficult and the operator often must look through the congested maze of knobs, switches and dials to find the desired control. Combined with the lack of programmable headland controls, fatigue can set in early, potentially shortening working days and busy seasons. As with prior MX models, the hitch position control lacks integrity and the lower stop is very difficult to use and adjust. Non-canceling detents on remote control levers further adds to operator movement and stress. The exclusive John Deere command arm was the forerunner of armrest controls and is still the benchmark with true fingertip controls. No matter how hard the others try, command arm is still the most comfortable and efficient control layout in the industry. The MX lighting strategy totally eliminates even momentary use of field lights when transport lights are activated. This prevents an operator from using field lights to check the position of turnoffs or implement clearance to roadside obstructions without turning off hazard lights. This adds to fatigue and tension when nighttime road travel is required with large implements. Non-adjustable front grille and cab lights prevent tailoring the lighting package to the operator's needs. Brake lights and self-canceling turn signals are good for some applications. John Deere allows independent control of hazard lighting and field lights. When extra lights are required for a clear view of driveways, culverts, or implement clearance, field lights can be momentarily illuminated without turning off hazard lights. The added margin of visibility and control takes stress out of nighttime road travel. John Deere Field Vision HID lighting is designed specifically for tractor lighting needs and provides superior lighting intensity right where it's needed most. Delayed egress lighting available on John Deere lights the operator's path when leaving the tractor in the dark, then goes off automatically after 90 seconds. Case IH goes to great lengths to feature greater glass area and cab volume than the competition. The view forward to the rear and sides is good for average operating requirements. Wide rear cab posts block the rear side view in some turns. In a direct comparison, the John Deere Command View Cab gives 8020 series tractor operators 360 degree panoramic view with unimpaired visibility forward and all around, whether traveling straight through the fields or when making close headland turns. A close look reveals that the larger numbers associated with the MX cab do not necessarily translate into ergonomic benefit. The cab is nominally larger in all directions. Unfortunately, this does translate to greater reach, making use of the performance monitor especially difficult. Measured from average operator seat position, the field cruise knob is the longest reach to a control in the command view cab. This is approximately 12 inches less than the reach to make control inputs on the MX standard display and performance monitor. Three additional inches of cab width at the seat add to the volume and glass area of the MX cab, but have no added benefit in terms of visibility or comfort. In some instances, the line of sight is altered by the larger cab dimensions, actually reducing visibility. As an example, the floor extends 3.5 inches further in front of the seat than the command view cab, limiting visibility to the row and the front wheels. In addition, the windshield glass is tapered out at the bottom, allowing more sun exposure and greater heat gain in the cab. Another example of greater cab volume that has little positive effect on comfort is headroom. Here, MX has one inch greater floor to ceiling height. However, headroom at the egress area inside the door is two inches less than John Deere. With the operator's seat positioned correctly for the average operator, 
the dimension from the seat back to the rear glass is 13 inches on the MX, compared to 9 inches with John Deere. When hooking up to a three-point implement, the MX operator has virtually no possibility of viewing the top hook or the lower coupler jaws, making connecting an operation in the blind. The view to the rear and down is also limited by the position of the lower edge of the rear glass, requiring the operator to strain to see the drawbar. The position of the rear cab glass on the command view cab allows the operator to more easily view hitch points for greater ease of implement mounting and connection. Finally, more glass equals more heat gain, thus more cooling load. And more cooling load means more non-productive parasitic horsepower loss. Greater volume means more cubic feet to cool, further increasing the power robbing cooling load. In summary, more glass and more volume sounds good and looks good on paper, but does not translate into a quantifiable benefit for the operator. Minor change has been made to the MX steering column to make adjustment of tilt separate from the telescope function. Despite this change, returning the wheel to a previously used position on cab re-entry is not simple like the John Deere memory tilt steering column. With both tilt and telescope adjustment to match the wheel position to the operator, the wheel also returns and locks quickly and automatically in the previously set position when returning to the seat. Another factor making case three-point hitch hookups difficult is the curved contour of the lower part of the hitch coupler. Unless the top link is adjusted to attain near-perfect alignment with the implement, the lower pins rarely enter and latch in the coupler. The efficiency of a quick coupler is defeated, and effort necessary to return the hitch to correct field adjustment is substantially increased. The John Deere quick coupler has more forgiveness for misalignment, allowing easy hookups that operators expect from a quick coupler. The operator need not leave the cab to release latch levers before hookup. MX offers optional dynamic ride control as their answer to John Deere hitch dampening, however with some obvious differences. First, the CNH operator's manual states that any three-point hitch implement in transport must have a minimum of 15 inches static ground to implement clearance. A control switch is located on the right hand console allowing dynamic ride control to be turned on and off by the operator. When enabled the system becomes active at 0.5 miles per hour. The implement will drop suddenly from its static height to transport height. This change was approximately 50 percent of the static lift height. With the reduced transport height, a ripper contacted a paved road surface in normal transport conditions. In addition, the system responds with unexpected hitch activity, even in reverse at speeds over 0.5 miles per hour. John Deere hitch dampening is simple and totally automatic, functioning only when needed, in transport. Move the hitch control lever to the locked transport position, and hitch dampening is automatically engaged implements remain at full lift height for optimum clearance to obstructions even in rough conditions. The MX up and forward engine design, taken originally from John Deere, requires an add-on transmission input drop box. The power flow must be lowered from the crankshaft level down to the center line of the planetary 18-speed transmission. This adds two meshes to the transmission for a total of six to seven meshes depending on the selected gear. The 16-speed John Deere power shift transmission has only two gear meshes in prime working speeds. With each gear mesh resulting in a parasitic loss of approximately 1.5 percent, the additional power loss on the MX-285 at rated load can be as high as 14 horsepower. The efficiency of the John Deere power shift transmission reduces parasitic loss, getting more productive power to the ground. Dual lever case transmission controls lack efficiency. The design of the left hand reverser control makes it difficult to operate by feel, requiring the operator to glance down repeatedly during shuttle shifting. The single lever control of the 16 speed John Deere power shift transmission combines shuttle shifting ease with quick and easy speed shifts, all with the light feel of the gated shift pattern. 
The MX Auto Shift feature operates in two modes. Shifts are commanded on the basis of actual engine speed and throttle position on electronically controlled MX-255 and MX-285 only. MX-210 and MX-230 do not have electronic engine control. With these two models, shifts are commanded based on less accurate calculations of transmission output speed for the currently selected gear. The feature thus has limited value compared to larger MX models or any 8020 model. Auto Field Operation, or AFO, operates in primary field working gears 11 and below and commands shifts as low as first gear. When auto shift is enabled, the system uses the last manually selected gear as maximum gear. The operator can lose track of the set maximum gear if shifts are made during AFO use. In addition, auto shift cannot be programmed into an end of row sequence. Clutching or shifting to neutral or reverse suspends auto power shift activity, but the max gear setting is retained. AFO auto power shift reactivates when shifting back into forward. The auto road operation or ARO operates in gears 13 to 18. The operator must cycle the auto shift switch to change between AFO and ARO. However, when selecting ARO in gears 11th or above, 18th is automatically selected as the maximum gear, and no other gears can be selected. The tractor seems to take off unexpectedly into any gear between 11th and 18th, with RPM shift points very closely spaced. ARO cannot be used below full transport speeds. John Deere APS allows the operator to consciously select a max gear, then activate APS. Likewise, when APS is suspended by clutching or manual shifts, a resume switch gives the operator control over the resumption of APS activity. All 8020 series engines are electronically controlled, so shifts are accurately commanded on the basis of exact throttle position, engine speed, and load. The MX uses a system called Parallel Priority Hydraulics. This system provides priority flow from a single pump to steering, with remaining flow available to remote and hitch functions. An equal, non-priority oil supply is available to supply up to four remote valves and the hitch, with equal flow and pressure potential at all valves. MX literature makes the system sound like an innovation. John Deere uses a separate 24.6 gallon per minute pump to supply dedicated flow for power steering. Meanwhile, SCV and the hitch valves are supplied oil in much the same way as MX from the standard 33.5 gallon per minute pressure flow compensated pump. A total of 58.1 gallons per minute, therefore, is available for John Deere steering and auxiliary hydraulic functions. The standard MX pump has a rated flow of 37.5 gallons per minute. MX data indicates that steering is maintained using only 5.5 gallons per minute, leaving 32 gallons per minute for other functions. Comparing to 24.6 gallons per minute available to steering with the 8020, can normal headland turns be achieved with the MX using only 5.5 gallons per minute? If not, Flow available to remotes and hitch under heavy steering demand could easily be envisioned to fall below 32 gallons per minute. This compares to 8020 series standard pump flow of 33.5 GPM. Considering greatest auxiliary hydraulic demand coincides most often with greatest steering demand, for example, headland turns, the volume of oil lost to steering is a concern in maintaining functions such as raised circuits and hydraulic motors. Only with the optional high flow system does MX reach a level more comparable with the 8020 series. The optional MX pump is rated at 51.5 gallons per minute. Accepting the estimate of 5.5 GPM maximum for steering, 46 GPM is potentially available for remote and hitch functions. John Deere offers an optional 42.5 GPM pump. Adding 24.6 GPM steering flow, the 8020 still has a total system flow of 67.1 gallons per minute, 
15.6 gallons per minute advantage over MX. Without performance monitor, operation of a hydraulic load in full function mode with the detent timer set to continuous will place all other hydraulic remotes on continuous detent. Only with the optional performance monitor can the MX operator set detent times for each individual circuit. When the mode selector is moved to motor, the remote valve lever is restricted to allow use of forward detent and float only for easy on-off motor control. However, the operator manual indicates to change to full function on shutdown and place the control lever in neutral. This leaves a new operator with no indication of which valve is controlling the motor. Inadvertent activation to the extend position could cause motor damage. Taking the time to move to the performance monitor detent screen will reveal a motor circuit with a C detent time. John Deere touch set hydraulics allow motor operation on any SCV using the same forward detent float strategy to control flow to the motor. However, unlike the MX, a John Deere operator has indicators in the touch set panel of which circuit is used to operate the motor. In addition, closing the control lever cover will give new operators further notice of the presence of a motor circuit. There is little chance for a costly mistake when a new operator enters the tractor. Case IH speaks of industry-leading interactive electronic control claiming the MX to be the first tractor with interactive communication between multiple tractor controllers. The use of a special plug-in diagnostic computer speeds whole tractor system troubleshooting. Case IH claims Service Advisor is a copy of their diagnostic computer. The John Deere 8000 series, introduced in 1994, three years prior to MX Magnum, pioneered interactive control for precise monitoring of operating conditions and optimum system performance. Since day one, John Deere technicians have been able to use onboard diagnostics to eliminate the guesswork from troubleshooting without requiring an additional computer. Service Advisor simply supplements the efficiency of the proven onboard diagnostics. Further reasons for the unprecedented uptime record of the John Deere 8000 series tractor family. While your customer may not be using precision farming opportunities now, John Deere has looked into the future and builds all 8020 series tractors with the necessary equipment for the seamless integration of profit-enhancing ag management solutions. Only John Deere offers an all-inclusive array of productive tools like AutoTrack, map-based seeding, parallel tracking, field dock, JD Link, and JD Office. Case IH customers will likely be told about the UltraShield warranty program. UltraShield uses a complicated system of oil analysis, coupons, mandatory inspections, logbooks, and deductibles to provide what is sold as a free 10,000-hour warranty. In reality, UltraShield is little more than a managed maintenance program with a considerable list of exclusions, such as major components like engine blocks. John Deere dealers should be familiar with the Plus 50 Limited Performance Warranty and John Deere PowerGuard Protection Plans. These programs offer customers straightforward protection without needless complication and expense. See Tractor Talk 327, entitled CNH Ultra Shield and Customer Care, The Truth Revealed, for complete information. This video has illustrated how John Deere 8020 series tractors are superior to their MX competition. When your customers ask for optimum reliability and uptime, ease and efficiency of operation, and the best profit potential and return on investment in a large row crop tractor, the 8020 series is the answer. Ultimately, tractor customers must consider the security and value which comes from purchasing an 8020 series tractor from John Deere and its stable dealer organization. CNH asks customers to choose between two tractors on common platforms which are nearly the same, a blue one and a red one. Which is the right choice? Uncertainty. Your customers have enough of it daily just being in agriculture. They don't need more uncertainty in the power they choose for their operation. They can always choose from the best dealer organization 
and the tractor company with the longest and best track record in the industry. We are solid, stable, still John Deere.